Hey guys, today we are uncovering some hidden secrets of the good old Intel Pentium MMX. What I'm about to show you, it doesn't cost anything. All you need is some free software and type in a few commands. We also don't need an expensive SuperSocket 7 motherboard with AGP and support for K62 Plus or 3 Plus processors. A regular Socket 7 motherboard with a bus speed of 66 MHz, PCI slots and support for the Pentium MMX is all we need. It's well known and I've covered this in quite a few videos that by turning off CPU and motherboard caches we can slow down Socket 7 processors to make them compatible with older speed sensitive DOS games like Wing Commander or Test Drive 3. This works great but the level of control we're getting is quite limited. So let's have a look at a graph to show what I mean. We've got a Pentium MMX running at 133 MHz. We're going to use percentages in this video because every Socket 7 machine will behave differently depending on what video card you have, the type of RAM and so on. So with both caches enabled we're getting 100%. If we turn off the CPU cache which is also called the level 1 cache we're getting 27.5% of the full performance and if we disable both caches we're getting around 13.5%. So we can see there's a huge gap of between 30 and 100% that we can't cater for and also between these two settings there is nothing in between to really fine tune the performance of our machine. But the Pentium MMX, well it has some hidden tricks up its sleeve. Now at this point I got to give some credit to a few members on Vogons, especially Gerwind for the excellent set mal utility which we will be using and also Clueless and other members that looked into this project. The real program that makes everything happen and will uncover the secrets of the Pentium MMX is the set mal utility and especially these four options here. So I'm just gonna run it and usually you can run L1D to in, uh, disable the level 1 cache but we're going to use uh, these commands here so let me just quickly type that in and it will show us what they actually mean so branch prediction, V pipeline, code cache and data cache so we have four settings to play around with there are toggles so either on and off so that gives us 16 uh, possible combinations and I've run them all and let's have a look at the result. Do pay attention to the colors. Purple are the speeds we can get with toggling level 1 and level 2 cache. Let's have a look what we can do with the set mal utility. Wow look at that. So in purple these are the results with just toggling the caches on and off and all the blue results these are thanks to set mal and using these switches here. So I ran all 16 variations and basically worked out the percentage and we can see that now um, between 45% uh, uh, of the maximum speed up down to around 14% we have really fine control over what sort of speed we are getting. We also have some more options here at the high end but there's more. If we look at the top it says motherboard cache is on. So these are all results with the motherboard cache enabled. You can go into the BIOS, disable the motherboard cache and let's have a look. So what we can see here is the purple results are by simply toggling level 1 and level 2 cache. The blue results are using set mal with the motherboard cache enabled and then the green results are the results from set mal but with the motherboard cache turned off. So we can see that we're getting some more uh, finer speeds uh, in the bottom end with these green ones but also a few more entries at the high end. Now you might be saying well there's still a huge gap uh, between around 45 and 75 percent and that is correct. Now this is an easy fix. This is a Pentium MMX running at 133 so if you change the uh, processor to a 166, a 200 or 233 uh, all these, not all of them, but most of these results will start shifting to the right and then you can cover this area. So basically what we're looking here is really fine control over the speed 
starting from uh, a 386 DX33 around about there um, covering a 486 DX250 all of that and then having a bit of option here to slow down the machine on the high end but really this is the interesting part and if you need to be a little bit more to the right like if you want to hit a fast DX266 for example just swap out the MMX133 for a faster model and you're good to go and we're not done yet so we've got a machine we can slow it down of course we've got to play some wing commander so I'm gonna set up uh, my joystick and get some sound going and then I'm gonna play wing commander and yep that's pretty much it for this video so those who <laughs> find wing commander interesting stick around everyone else let me know what you think leave it down below in the comments and yeah do let me know where you're aware of this already is this something new and interesting and what are you going to do with this information and yeah thanks for watching i shall see you soon with another one They're attacking us, sir. Affirmative, Captain. No humans will survive. Not bad, sir. No humans will survive. Not bad, sir. They're attacking us, sir. Affirmative, Captain. No humans will survive. You are cleared to land.
They're attacking us, sir. Affirmative, Captain. No humans will survive. Humans will survive. We've destroyed an enemy fighter. Not bad, sir. Glad to see you, sir. They're attacking us, sir. Affirmative, Captain. The Imperial Guard will kill you.
<laughs> One enemy fighter down. <laughs>